In this video, I'm going to take you through the process of undercoating your miniatures, showing you what it's like to use the different colours, and I'll be seeing if it's worth doing a zenith or highlight. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to undercoat your miniatures. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or I've got a Patreon which I'll link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. In this video, I want to shout out and give a massive thank you to You Ate My Sandwich for being our latest supporter. It's really appreciated and it really pushes the channel forward. So I get asked a lot or told that I've missed priming and my getting started with painting miniatures video. I didn't include it because the whole process of undercoating your miniatures and using the Citadel sprays deserves its own video. And it's a lot to deal with and to explain to someone who's just starting out painting for the first time. So if you're still wondering what it's all about, then you're in luck. Cause I'm about to explain everything I know, which shouldn't take long. Sometimes I wonder if people just do things because that's how other people have said they should be done. But I'm all about educating people on the whys and hows here at Tabletop Ready. There is a purpose behind priming your miniatures. Primers have been made differently and they tend to be a lot thicker. And the whole purpose is to create a surface for your paint to adhere to. Without it, you may find it tough to get down a layer of paint on the plastic. And even if you can get a layer down, it's easy to rub off and it may get ruined through general use. You can apply primer in all the same ways you would apply paint to your miniatures, but I'm going to be focusing on the more common method within the Warhammer hobby, and that's with using some sprays. Before we get to using the actual sprays, you'll want to get your miniatures built and ready to spray. Luckily I've done a tutorial on that as well, so make sure to go check that out. So you've got your miniatures ready to undercoat, so let's now go through the steps to get the best results from using your sprays. First of all, it's important to know the dangers of using aerosol sprays which are written on the can. You'll also see the recommended instructions for getting your miniatures painted and we'll be going through these steps in just a moment. So the ideal situation is that we can get the miniatures completely sprayed so the paint dries in one even coat. Rather than spraying one side of your miniatures, letting that dry and then spraying the other side. This could cause unwanted build up in some areas with the spray. What I like to do is attach the miniatures to something I'm able to hold with one hand and I find using a cheap ruler is perfect for the job and you can stick your parts to the ruler using some blue tack. This will let you move and rotate your miniatures to make covering them much easier. So let's go through the actual process of spraying now because it's good to go into some detail. To start you always want to spray outside or in a well ventilated area. The temperature of the can can also affect how the paint sprays, so make sure the spray is at least room temperature. Next, give the spray a good shake for 2 minutes. Now you're ready to spray, you want to keep a distance around 30cm or a forearm's length between the can and what you're spraying. You want to keep the can moving while spraying and use short controlled bursts. This will ensure you get a nice even coverage and prevent the paint building up. Here's where having the miniatures attached to something makes life easier. Take your time and build this up slowly. If it's your first time then maybe practice on something else first until you feel confident enough to spray your actual miniatures. Make sure to let the undercoat dry for at least 15 minutes before doing anything else to it. Spraying miniatures can take some time and practice to really feel comfortable doing it. And even now I can mess up. So don't worry. Now we have some miniatures primed with our sprays Let's talk about what colour primer you may want to use. So does the colour even matter? The short answer is not really. Because given enough layers you can paint whatever colour you want your miniatures to be. But deciding on what colour primer you want to use can make things a lot easier. And it can also affect the overall tone you may be after. I've got three space marines here all primed and ready to paint. They're sprayed with black, grey and white, which should help us to see if it really makes a difference when we start applying our base colour. And while I'm getting these examples painted, why not let me know what colour primer you like to use and if you think the choice of colour actually makes a difference. 
So here are the three Space Marines all painted exactly the same and the only difference being the colour of the primer. I know it may look like there isn't much of a difference but there really is and you would see if you were to use different colours to undercoat miniatures for the same army. So I guess as long as you use the same colour spray across your army it will work out fine. Where it does make a difference is for some of the lighter colours. For example you're not going to be able to paint yellow successfully over a black undercoat. So this is where you would need to use the white scar or wraith bone spray. The other thing to think about would be to use a colour undercoat that closely matches the overall colour of what you want the miniatures to be. Just be aware the colour sprays aren't an exact match to the colours in the pots. I want to finish up with something I'm interested in knowing and I'm sure you will be as well. You can use the sprays in a certain way to create something called a zenithal highlight. A zenithal highlight is a two-toned undercoat, generally a lighter and a darker tone and this is done to create the effect of natural light shining directly from above. If you want to create a zenithal highlight you can start with some chaos black spray and once that's completely dried use some white scar and spray the miniature from above the same direction the light would be coming from. Build this up slowly with some light passes until you have the effect you're after. Now is this worth doing? My prediction is that if we painted a miniature with a zenithal highlight in the same way we painted a miniature with a flat coloured undercoat then we would just cover up all those different tones we would want to come through. But what I do think would be great for this way of undercoating is for using contrast paints. Did you say contrast paint? Using the base and layer paints do actually work quite well with the Zen of the Highlight, but you do need to keep them thin with one layer. And as I thought, the contrast paints work really great with this type of undercoating, but you will have to get good at this way of spraying, because any blotchiness and where the transitions are messy will be obvious. Like all things, it's going to be a choice, but let me know what you think. So we now have some fully primed miniatures using the Citadel sprays, if you want to see more, I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel showing all sorts of things that can help you get your miniatures painted. And if you want to learn how to use contrast paints, go check out the War Hipster. Just let them know I sent you there. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below.